Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Roth Draw. And depending on where you are in the world, today is my birthday! The Digital Art Bootcamp, the entire course has been out for a few months and it's been so rewarding seeing all the work an improvement that I wanted to give a class out for free on my channel on Master Study. This class seemed to really help people and the work that came out of it was absolutely mind blowing. So I hope you guys learned a lot from it. If you are part of the Digital Art Bootcamp, we just released another class for free, Color and Light 101. Yeah, I go over the color wheel, basic color theory. I took a piece and I lit and colored it four times. I think it turned out super cool. My goal with the Digital Art Bootcamp is to make it the best as possible. So every now and then I will add free courses. Think of it like free updates for life. And so if you want more info or where to sign up, head to digitalartbootcamp.com. And I hope you enjoyed this class on Master Study. See ya. Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Art Bootcamp. This is class 4.2, drawing like the masters classical. Awesome. Yeah, we are almost done with month four. That mm. is insane. And it's been so rewarding looking at the finished assignments on Discord. You guys have been improving. Mm -hmm. Your studies look absolutely incredible. And I am so excited for this class because we will be studying classical masters. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we did a poll um, and you guys have chosen Line Decker and Sargent. It was so even. Originally, I was gonna spend this class studying one master, you know, like two to three hours, one master, but Sergeant, Leyendecker all have different approaches, you know, and they are masters in their own right. And so the first half we'll be studying Leyendecker and the second half we'll be learning Sergeant. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, small disclaimer. Um, we realized after the fact that there was a problem with the audio and it sounds a little bit muffled in the lesson. Yeah. Um, Ross and I actually, you know, talked about maybe re-recording it, but yeah. you know, we think that there's a lot of really good content uh, that we recorded the first time around. And mm -hmm. if we were to redo the audio, then we might lose some of that. And yeah. obviously the learning materials is first priority. So what we're doing is we're posting this lesson a little bit later. So we have time for, to put up all the subtitles so you could follow along. And we're also gonna be including an extra quick teak for them, right? Yeah, to make up for the audio issues, we are doing two quick teaks in this package. Sweet. And so I'm actually really excited how this turned out. I think the pieces look awesome. So. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Awesome. Hey everyone, welcome back to Digital Art Bootcamp. And this is class 4.2, Drawing Like the Master's welcome Classical. Back. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I am super excited for this class. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like all the students are too, because we'll be diving deep into some of the golden techniques, some of the classical masters like Sargent, Zoroya, Leindecker, Zorn. And we recently did a poll on Patreon asking which one would you want us to study? Mm -hmm. And the poll was pretty split between Sergeant and Leindecker, so we decided to study both. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the last lesson, we'll be splitting it in half. So part one, we'll be doing Leindecker and part two, Sergeant. Yeah, so they, they are known for completely different things, but I think they are masters in their own right. And I'll be kind of dissecting and showing you guys what I see into what makes them classical masters and golden techniques. And hopefully you guys learn a lot that you can implement in your own work. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, Sargent's more fine art and Leyendecker's more like illustration, it feels, right? Yeah, it, but but the crazy thing is, like Leyendecker can probably paint close to Sargent, mm. but he chooses a more stylized approach. And I want to show you why that's so amazing. Mm. You know, he's not just a kind of a painter, but a designer. Mm. Yeah. So, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Oh, before we do so, um, I want to feature some amazing, amazing students in the Digital Art Bootcamp that has, oh my gosh, I think I have so many features here. Uh. So we'll just go one by one real quick. Um, this is a kind of first glance for uh, people that have been submitting in the finished homework mm -hmm. uh, on our Discord. And yeah, we saw some awesome work. This is poses from imagination. Ooh. That's awesome. Wow. Wow. Very saturated. I like it. Very uh, bright, very kind of like uh, warm and cool. You know, I think you did a great job. And this is from uh, Imagination. Yeah. Good job, Christina. And ooh, this this was fun. This was ooh. from Reeve King. Nice. Ooh, kind of like creature. Dang, he's, he's jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, This one. Oh, wow. Mm. This is from Ash. It's beautiful. Very beautiful colors. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's so cool to see all the different styles from students, you know, mm -hmm. very kind of like, we, we get to see all walks of life. 
Yeah, everyone's interpretation. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then uh, last class, which is four point one, uh, we chose a modern master, mm -hmm. and this is incredible. Whoa! This is from Ao. Ao. <laughs> Ao. Um, study Ray seventeen. Ray, I think she is like a modern master. You know, there is so much going on here that's so fresh, mm -hmm. right? And this is their interpretation. Wow, very, very good capturing of the same feeling, the same colors. Yeah, piece. the same likeness. Mm -hmm. I feel like it feels like a ray piece. And I hopefully you guys learn a lot, you know, from kind of studying these modern masters and trying to understand why they do certain things. And I think you did a really good job at, you know, capturing some of that cool light right there. Mm -hmm. that, that really nice cool light there. And so, uh, yeah, congratulations. Really cool. Yeah, hopefully you learn some things to apply into your own work also. Yeah. Oh, this is from our <laughs> moderator, Nova. Hi, Nova. <laughs> wow, this is this is awesome. This is the same piece I just pulled up, but very zoomed and cropped in. She's really right. focusing on one part. Mm. Nice. Wow. Oh, I see the different flair. You know, uh, <laughs> one of the criteria, if, if you wanted, was to have like a uh, five to ten percent flair, and she was adding, you know, maybe this uh, tail mm. on the hair, maybe this marble, With maybe this glove. Gloves. Right. And I think this is so useful and valuable. Like, yes, we've captured the piece, but try and add some elements, your own flair, but still pertains to the same style. It's like you learned everything about the piece and now you're applying what you learned and trying to add to it. Yeah, it's like, how can I match the style that's there with adding my own parts from imagination? Yeah, and um, I, I hope you learned a lot because it feels like you have, you know, I haven't, like this is, such a great study, and uh, I'm, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, congratulations, Nova. This next one. Oh, pff, oh this man. is uh, th this piece looks familiar. Man, uh, this is from uh, Sarah KVDG. I painted this uh, piece in I think 2015. Wow, for my name. Yeah, it's been a minute. I actually really was proud of this piece, you know, and I think Sarah did a great job at capturing some of the elements that I was really proud of. For example, like the face had a like really cool indication. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, like I was proud of, you know, that side light of the nose, these lips. And I really feel like you have the likeness of the face here and some of the light in the dark. I think the transitions are great. If I squint, the colors you've nailed. So um, I think really good job, Sarah. Yeah, nice composition and all yeah. of it. Good job. This is a uh, Craig Mullins, and this is from Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Yeah, if I squint, you've captured the likeness of it. I would encourage and try and study some of like these kind of intricacy with the water. I think why people are attracted to this piece is with this kind of a uh, this water, and I think you got like eighty five percent there, um, which is great. You captured the likeness, the impression, and then I would maybe spend maybe twenty more minutes adding that layer of like noise mm -hmm. yeah craig mullins is known for that photorealistic noise yeah. yeah um next one up let's see Ooh, a jamie jones study from nuno nice nuno this was a very this was the one of the it pieces of its time you know mm -hmm. like jamie jones was really fresh coming onto the scene he's a known master and every piece he makes is just like a signature and I think you did a really good job at kind of kind of uh, <coughs> indicating some of the characteristics that this piece is known for. For example, the trail of smoke. I think it looks really good. Um, I really love some of the noise you, ha you have here. Mm -hmm. I see all this noise brush. I think if I squint, you captured the colors. I think it's all there. And so great job, you know? Yeah, hopefully it's helping you pick out what makes it good. Like really strong negative shape. And a strong yeah you know, um, cue differences, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Definitely. Yeah. Good job. This one is from Leo. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the students are really good at capturing the likeness, you know, mm -hmm. like, and that's half of it, you know, capturing what it looks like. For example, when you study reference, you're just trying to capture the likeness and then you go into it. So this one, if I squint, I think you did a really good job at kind of capturing some of these shapes in the water. This is all super juicy. Mm -hmm. And I think you did a really good job with some of this, uh, like reflection of the water as well. So yeah, really good um, lighting and color, like matching it. it. Looks really nice. Yeah, I think the colors are pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't. It's I rarely see a difference. Actually, if I squint, 
really good reach out. Mm -hmm. I have this one. Ooh, this was one of the earlier ones that I was like, yes. Biza? Biza? I think you did. Yeah. I think all the students are doing a really great job at capturing that likeness. Mm -hmm. so, this is a. I remember who this is from. Oh, Jamie Jones. <laughs> I didn't even notice. The Jamie Jones study. Yeah. Great, great job. I like how you captured um, the direction of the brush strokes. You used a lot of vertical strokes that were like that in mm -hmm. the original. Very yep. Nice. nice. We have two more. And this one is a Craig Mullins. Ooh. Mm. I love that you took the extra step and thought about the big compositional shapes, which we were talking about in the 4.1. You know, you you squinted, looked at its general shape design, and tried yourself to capture that shape design. Yeah, you definitely studied it. Like, oh, how does this apply to the real thirds? How mm -hmm. can I use this in my work? Very nice. Right. Good job, Kim. And last but not least. Oh, who that? Who <laughs> is this? It's from our very own student voice, Stella. Hello. How's it going? Good. Thanks, Ross. I think if I squint, I think you did a really good job at capturing the likeness. You know, I almost prefer a, a, a little bit about your shadows, actually. Mm. I think it this is really a juicy part, and then I I love how you captured the saturation kind of in between the light and the shadow. Mm, thank you. I think that's really good, and I love how you tried your best to indicate some of these brush strokes here, and I think that looks great. I I actually prefer your nose. Oh. I, I was that a design decision that, that you made? Why why did you choose to make that nose sharper? Um, just because I use a polygonal lasso tool and mm. Lin Chen used just kind of paints it in. Got it. So it just kinda of naturally made mine sharper. <laughs> yeah. Um and I noticed that you've done two of these. Oh, so yeah. you've done four point one's assignment twice. So yeah. This is great. Yeah, I like master studies, they're fun. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the first half of this class is, uh, oh yeah, great job everyone. <laughs> great job everyone. I'm, yeah, we are mind blown um, with all the talent here. And also don't be afraid and don't be hesitant um, or scared or intimidated when you see your peers homework um, that you're like, oh man, I wish I was that level, etc. Like. It's all a journey. It all takes time. I think anyone can tell you that it literally, you have your whole life ahead of you. If your whole entire art journey, everyone starts somewhere. Yeah. And also in the Discord, we do have um, some channels there for feedback, whether it's feedback on your assignments or feedback on like any work at all. And a lot of our Discord members are really active there giving great feedback. Yeah. So if you get stuck or you're not sure, I definitely recommend posting it there and hearing from your classmates. Yeah. I mean, just keep believing and keep remembering that everyone is on their own path mm -hmm. you know i i started somewhere i was definitely not at this level when i started etc it's all a process my main thing with the digital art booking app is to give you those tools give you that knowledge and give you some of the best practices that i learned to get to where i am so. yeah it's not about like oh who's more talented it's oh who's further along on their journey you'll right. get there you'll get there yeah yeah, and uh, yeah, the first half of this class will be focusing on line decker, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a little break. You guys can, uh, I, I keep saying walk your dog, but what if you don't have a dog? Walk your panda. And then <laughs> when you come back, we'll study sergeant. Oh. Yes, line decker. Dude, I, line decker is so good. Uh, I wanna, yeah, I wanna show you some of the things I notice and I see, you know, I, I think the mod, like the uh, the average eye, the average person, mm -hmm. looks at it and go, "Oh, cool art, cool oh, art, it's a, cool it's art. a pretty lady." Yeah. Right. It's a, oh, it's a pretty lady. But I think when you give it to an artist, they notice a little more in depth about it. It's kind of like when a musician listens to a song; they can dissect the different layers mm -hmm. and the different instruments. But for me, I'm like, "Oh, that, that sounds cool." Yeah. <laughs> right. And so, I think Line Decker is known for the way he designs shapes mm. and the way his signature style of course but he designed every single square inch of his painting and that's what that's why i love him so much he's more than just a painter but he's more of a designer 
wall. You know? Yeah, nothing's random. You know, he has intent for every stroke he puts down. Right. Do you have a favorite line decker piece? Um. No. Uh, no? <laughs> they're no. all they're all lovely. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just grabbed a few that I like, like I'm really attracted to, um, that I can find high res versions of online <laughs> that I didn't have to scan in. Um, but let me show you the way kind of works, right? Mm -hmm. um, that, what I've noticed, he redraws the same thing over and over and over again until he's happy with, the, like he's exploring. This is his design phase, mm -hmm. you know, with every care design. You go do a lot of iterations, mm -hmm. and then you make final tweaks, and then you have the final design um, to be like kind of shipped off into production. But he does the same thing, but with illustration. Yeah, like a lot of your works, um, you know, you try out different lighting scenarios, and that's really easy in digital art. But here, you can see he's trying out maybe at the bottom light on the top left, or mm -hmm. the different you know lighting decisions before committing to a, a final illustration. It's hard to like repaint over it. Right. Yeah. So he constantly. I love that he's such a master of his craft that he's not going to put out anything that he doesn't feel is perfect. Mm. So you get, so you see here, he's exploring. Let me change it to a red. He's exploring the different shape language. You see that? Mm. And then over here, it's maybe a little more realistic. He's like, okay, what? Well, what do I feel that this piece needs the most? And mm. he's exploring different options. This feels way different than this. This is a whole different lighting scenario. This is an up light. And this one is a, like a front light. Mm -hmm. And this one is a direct light. Yeah. And so I love that he's such a, he's always designing. And this is a good practice that you guys can have too in your own work. And this is what I do a lot of. I try my best to any aspect of my painting, I can design. And so that's something that Jamie Jones taught me. It's mm -hmm. that for everything that you paint, that, that you create, try, like, zoom in anywhere on this painting, and it's designed. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is that you can cut out a square. And it looks awesome. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> That's very, actually really aesthetic. Very intentional. Yeah, very intentional. Uh, yeah, that is... Dude, that's a very aesthetic square, right? It's a good <laughs> balance of... Dude, I'm kind of surprised. A good balance of like big, medium, small. You know, the graphic breakup is really nice. You know, let's try again. Let's try again. Say stop. That was, that was a lot of nice luck. Stop. Okay, this is... Oh, you got that bounce light there, nice. Ooh, mm. look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love Lion Decker. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I learned uh, from Jamie Jones and his studies and from Lion Decker as well. Since Lion Decker is such like an educator and like he's very well versed in uh, both illustration and design that he designs every portion of his painting and that practice we can all use you know like don't just maybe half-ass an area think of a way to make even the corners of your painting where people don't even look give them something to look for you know mm -hmm. give them something to look at so they can appreciate every single like corner of your painting so what are ways you think that he does that you know because it seems like super overwhelming like looking at it being like okay you know just design like that does he just do a lot of studies or research or what do you think yeah so i maybe i can touch on some basic design here mm -hmm. um, because we will be going into more design in the character design class mm -hmm. later this year but a good design has good breakup of uh, proportion so you have i mean the most common breakup is big medium and small see ya see ya. how kind of visually interesting that is. Mm -hmm. If you have, let's say, that looks a little less interesting, mm -hmm. you know? You see, like it feels a little maybe off balance, but a good design is all about aesthetic proportions. 
That's why humans... All right, hold on. Scrap your brain. I'm digging deep. This is something I learned. And I'm going to give you a lesson on design and human nature. Okay. Are you ready? We are ready. Okay. Now that you've asked me this, I can properly tell you what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think humans... Why are we attracted to good design and what makes the good design, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we attracted to some things versus other things? And I think it's because the golden ratio of how we are split up are like two thirds. So you have, you know, two, you have the arm. It's like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Everything is split into thirds. And so whenever we study like composition, or we're studying design, everything, like you hear the number three a lot, mm -hmm. right? One, yeah. two, three. So like, if you want to make something look organic, it's one, two, three. Usually it's like big, medium, small. Um, we have like bronze, silver, gold. Everything is split up into three because we ourselves as humans are made up into a uh, segment of three. Mm. And so the golden ratio, um, for example, like the face, we're attracted to like, oh yeah, um, there's two eyes and the eye in the middle. Like, like the space of an eye in yeah. two eyes. Okay. Right. Space of an eye, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Like the heads. I, I think everything is broken up into third. For example, the width. <laughs> of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Wait, one, two, three. Our three heads. Mm, I see. So everything in life that we're attracted to, we can probably break it up into composition of three. Yeah, and also big, medium, small comes up a lot. Like even like the human body, like the head small, the torso is medium, and the legs are like proportionate the longest part. Right. You know, yeah. aesthetically, you, if you look for it, you'll see that a lot in nature, and then also just in design and pictures. People use increments of three a lot. Right. Rule of thirds, you know. Ooh, look at that! You see that? He put this oh, lance on the rule of third. On the rule of thirds. You, the rule of thirds. I'm sorry if my explanation was a little like spotty. I know you're like, wait, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> but the main point I'm trying to get across is that us humans are made from a rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're attracted to rule of the thirds. Yeah. Yes. So, because you just kind of drew in, you know, we, we, we're using the term rule of thirds a lot. If someone's like never heard of what you've done with the rule of thirds, just real quick, what is that? The rule of thirds is, well, I kind of said like every divine principle can be split into kind of three. Mm -hmm. And for your composition, you if you split your paintings into threes, which is... Like one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So splitting compositions, splitting subjects, splitting paintings into threes can, that's rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so let me tell you a little more about um, the, the rule of third and focal points. Usually you don't want your focal points to be up here, <laughs> you know, kind of a, away from where it intersects. You would want to place your focal points where the rule of the thirds intersect. Mm -hmm. So the most important parts you kind of want on those intersections there, right? Yeah, that's a general rule of thumb. If you are a complete master, you'll probably, you know, have some fun playing with different kind of uh, focal points. But usually, kind of the, uh, the golden rule mm -hmm. is to place your focal points on these areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why, you know, this hand is right here, this lance is right here, you know, we get the foot mm -hmm. right there, etc. And so, look at all this juicy information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you look at Leindecker's work, I think a lot of people like to study him and like to look at his work it is because everything is designed. So there's a the reason for everything. For mm -hmm. example, the man's tuxedo, had no silhouette, mm. you know? 
And you start to wonder, why did he do that? There are a million reasons why he could have done that, or he could have told you verbally. But in, in my opinion, that's half the fun. Mm-hmm. Why did the artist, considered a master, do that? And I believe it's to showcase the focal point, which is the female. You know, she is kind of like a bright light, a bright swan. Mm-hmm. And the only parts that are lit on the male are the the color of the shirt that connects them, mm-hmm. so they feel connected. You see that? Yeah, yeah. I, um, if he as a character wasn't there at all and it was just that blank space, it would feel very unbalanced. But right. then, like if his silhouette was there and he was like another character there, the attention would be pulled off of her. Right. So I so I feel like there is a uh, rules of three here. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just uh, let's just draw these squares here. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, notice with these rule of uh, thirds also that masters usually don't put anything directly in the middle. It makes a very stagnant piece. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, you know, he's on this line. Mm -hmm. She's on this line. Mm -hmm. And wow, the gorgeous tension of this. You know, let's let that breathe. Gorgeous tension of that. Mm. That's, you see that? Yeah. That's, That's really cool. And let's do our test again. You see, like every part of this painting, you can cut out. Wow, that's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, so that is a good tip and trick for you guys um, that cut out any part of your painting and see how you can make that look better and line things up with the rule of third. You know, I I think we have a lot of beginners in the digital art bootcamp and this is your intro to composition. Mm -hmm. The rule of thirds, if you don't know where to place your subjects, make your focal points the place where the rule of thirds intersect and try to oh my god look at this you see that he he didn't even go over this box Mm -hmm. he kept mostly everything in this box kept all the information of the man's face in this box Mm -hmm. the hands in this box interesting yeah and don't think that um what we were talking about like if you crop any part of the image, you want it to be visually interesting. Don't think that means that everything has to be busy. There's a lot of places here that is pure black. He's giving the subject room to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, but every part that is intentional mm-hmm. has a lot of like very definite decisions he's made. Yeah. Like right here, there's a lot more negative space mm-hmm. than here is activity. And so I'll teach that again later in the, in the care design because care designs are just composition within themselves Mm -hmm. you know we design composition we we design characters that have a focal point Mm -hmm. um maybe it's a pikachu we have the electric tail uh, maybe spongebob he himself he's a whole focal point he's a square but um here is an intro is simplicity versus complexity Mm -hmm. that to us simulates our brain and could help make a design better so we have simplicity and complexity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, she has very simple, like soft, you know, feeling to her, but then she's contrasted by the very complex hard metal, right? Right. Mm. So, you see that? Mm-hmm. Since she feels more simple, and this feels more complex, it pushes one another, and so she, because the stairs is complex, she will feel more soft. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it and trying to dissect the painting. Maybe that was a conscious design decision made by Leindecker, where he probably made this even more busier than it, than, than it should be mm-hmm. for her to feel more soft. Mm. And she, to make this feel more busy, I think he softened up some of this area because he could have easily done this. So if this is uh, the shadow, I mean, I think it needs to be a little more blue. Oh, have like more contrast in the lights and Yeah, a little, a little more contrast in the shadows. Yeah, he didn't have to have the bounce light. Ooh, like that's nice. But if I take it away, 
it feels more softer. Mm -hmm. You feel that? Yeah, this is a great piece too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more you study master's works, the more you pick up on things and then notice it in the real world and then notice it in your own work and it all kind of like stems from stems from each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I just love that he keeps drawing the same thing until he think is perfect mm -hmm. and then he makes the final one. Mm -hmm. And so I think nowadays we just want to rush everything, right? Yeah. With social media, like, oh, let's post it. Oh, let's uh, let's make it pretty and just post it real quick, you know? But there was no social media back then. And you can tell that through his craft, he's really taking the time to think about the decisions that he's making. And that is something we can all learn, you mm -hmm. know? Let's be thoughtful about our art, our design decision, and it will help us actually become better artists because we are intentionally trying to give the viewer an experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I think looking at all of these, ooh, this is so cool, right? Mm -hmm. The Like if I squint, there's this is such good design. I think Line Decker almost feels really modern. Yeah, he, uh, he's, he was ahead of his time. Yeah. Or he, at least he influenced a lot of the later generations. Right. Ooh, this is cool. You know what? I'm gonna, just for my curiosity, I want to split this. This one also is a good example of simple versus complex. It's their little simple vehicle versus that complex bicycle there. Ooh, this is very interesting to me. Yeah, I think a lot can be said by just splitting compositions up into thirds mm -hmm. and seeing what information is being put in each one. Because he could have done like, you see that? Mm -hmm. Could have done that. But the way he simplifies everything is really beautiful. For example, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm noticing, you know? Yeah, and a lot of these decisions, I don't think were conscious. I don't think he consciously said, okay, let me make it this part longer and this part shorter so that it cuts off before the axis. I think it's just like subconsciously, you kind of just start doing what you know looks good and mm -hmm. it always kind of falls in this pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so now I'm going to try and study this one that I find very attractive. You know, if I squint, <laughs> I'm like, that's a very attractive old lady <laughs> <laughs> um and <laughs> what a laugh at me and so when you guys are doing the classical studies now i'm going to give you a another tool that you can use and it's to split your piece up into thirds mm. and that will help you draw more accurately so split this into thirds I think a lot of us have done this in school, you know, we mm -hmm. split into thirds and then we kind of like put it together like a puzzle piece, yeah. right? It's kind of like those men or those um, children's menus you get at restaurants where they have a little character with the boxes and you have to draw it next to it, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do that. Cool. But you understood what I was trying to say with kind of like humans being both of thirds mm -hmm. and why we're attracted to that. Because that's important that they know. Yeah. 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 Pro promise? I, I, I promise. All right. I understand. <laughs> relay it back to them real quick. Okay. Um, naturally, we just tend to like things broken up into thirds. Um, it's just kind of how nature happens to be. You know, if you look at the, the human body, like if you stretch your arm out in front of you, you'll notice that your hand is the shortest part and your forearm is longer. And then probably apart from your elbow to your shoulder is the longest part. So there's like a pattern of small, medium, or yeah, small, medium, large, everywhere in nature. And if you start to put that in your drawings, instead of having like, you're gonna draw three buildings, don't do three equal size buildings. Maybe make mm -hmm. one big, one medium, one small. It makes it more interesting, that kind of idea. Right, like this here, if I'm drawing buildings, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 
That's, that's so boring. Mm -hmm. But. That feels more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, there's more negative space that's interesting. Um, your eye kind of flows ooh, up the buildings. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's more interesting. So whenever you guys draw and design or try to paint and you feel like it needs more visual stimulus or you think maybe the design could feel better, try your best to push big, medium, small, and the rules of thirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. Let's steady <laughs> line decker. Yay. Scary. So when I'm studying old masters, I'm thinking of approach. And I'm pretty sure if we look at the older works, let me try to find and locate this. Cool. And let's try to see his approach, you know? Mm -hmm. That's important. It seems like he's splitting it up into like fifths. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see that? Kind of rules, it, it's all gridded. So he's already coming from that kind of guided background. Oh. Yeah, if you notice here, Leindecker draws with a lot of grids, mm. which is really cool because he using guides. And that's what they used before. Now, no one uses guides at all, right? Mm. It's like almost a taboo. Like, why do you use a little graph? Like, oh, that's not authentic, you know? Right. And so I think, I think he's drawing from a live model, mm. actually, because he's testing out different lighting scenarios. I mean, I could be wrong, but it seems like he's studying lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, so he probably has a live model in there and he's uh, adjusting the light to match the illustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we understand kind of how he starts and let's keep studying. Got this. Okay. Man, this will be hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what? Sorry, oh, no. Go ahead. oh, no, I was just going to ask you um, how you were using the graph there. Right, yeah. So I'm using the graph here uh, to understand where things fall into place to make my drawing more accurate. Mm. And so this is a good technique for them to use as well um, to try to get more accurate drawings. And so, for example, this curve looks like it's around here. Oh, are you like looking at like the, the intersection points on the, on the line? Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to capture all these points. Yeah, it makes it easy because rather than looking at like one kind of overwhelming piece, you're kind of breaking each one up into little squares. Like, okay, right. what does this square contain? Where yes. does the thumb cross this line? That kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. This isn't just a good technique for master study. This is like good for even like studying portraits or landscape or photography, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, hundred percent. I um, I might take some liberties mm. with this just to have some fun. Um. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm just right now, I'm just trying my best to capture this drawing mm -hmm. and the general shape. And this is how you study. I, When you go do a study, always think about one thing you want to gain from it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want to learn maybe how he breaks up these individual shapes and he simplifies. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm trying to learn rendering because he renders so beautifully. And so I'm trying to choose different subjects that I can kind of uh, take inspiration and learn from. Because if we just go into it and I want to be like Leindecker when I finish this study, that's mm. unrealistic. I think maybe focus on one or two things that you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a good, healthy mindset to have. Yeah. All right. This is a little hard. Yeah. If your mindset is, okay, I want to learn from this rather than, okay, I want to like completely replicate it, you won't be disappointed because he is a master who has many, many years under his belt. Right. Cool. Right now, I'm going to simmer my grid because I want to have some fun, you know, mm. take some, uh, take some liberties a little bit. Okay. So one thing I've already noticed from doing this work is everything has a general line of action. Mm, what do you mean by that? And so this is could be one curve. Oh, you see that? This could feel like one curve. And 
everything has a general shape and line of action, and you're trying to just capture it. That's why I love line decker. Everything is a shape, you know? For example, this thing is a shape. This sleeve here is one shape. Mm. You, you feel this? Her neck and her back feel like one continuous curve. I think that's why I consider him such a kind of a master artist is the old masters actually planned out uh, like a lot more um, than us nowadays. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays we just want to draw control Z, let's color balance, <laughs> 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 let's liquefy, <laughs> let's oh, liquefy let's... proportion, let Let's color balance, you know, let's play with curve and experiment, photo bash. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, but you know what? I, I think it's a different time. So like we are in a completely different time. Yeah, it's not like we can, cause I don't like the idea of like, oh, all these new, all these new artists are just lazy doing this. Like no, the industry's changed so much, especially social media is all about like algorithm, like, okay, quickly, how? How consistently can you post? You know, Norman Rockwell, Lion Decker, Sergeant Zorn, they didn't have to worry about, okay, oh man, I need to make a painting by Tuesday at noon because that's when the most people will see it. You know? Right. <laughs> but they did have deadlines. They did have deadlines. They did have deadlines. But yeah, I think the times have completely changed. You know, now we're all about efficiency mm -hmm. and because like movie studios aren't paying you to draw every single mm. person in a crowd. Um, so you just grab a photo of a crowd and you put it in and learn how to mix and match. Yeah. Like cut, you, uh, the more you learn about art, the better you get at cutting corners because it's right. what you got to do. <laughs> but yeah. I, I think when we're with this class, when we're studying classical masters, understanding how the old school people, like old school artists does it and then bring it to your own work, that will actually give it make it fresher mm -hmm. because nowadays we're all about new school technique mm -hmm. you know modern techniques but bringing old school to your work and that's why we are so attracted to like line decker and people with style and foundation they study the foundations first they understand how to draw they understand form and the basics and then they add their style on top yeah also i feel like a lot of everyone's kind of like copying the same few digital techniques from other digital artists then mm -hmm. going back to the actual traditional artists who use paint um and taking you know taking away some concepts from them can make your work a lot fresher too yeah definitely and so right now this is my general drawing and i think it looks pretty cool you know i think it's uh it's capturing the likeness mm -hmm. that's what we want we're capturing the likeness of it and i'm gonna try and dissect how he starts painting I'm, I'm always trying to study and understand what he's doing, how he's approaching it. So yeah, I feel like, um other masters works he's done, you you have like that wash, let it shine through. But his work is so creamy, like that background is such, such a creamy look to it. Creamy? Yeah, like the, that white background. Like, really mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like yogurt. I don't know. <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> cool. Nice. That's, that's the best and only old lady I've ever seen you draw. Really? Oh, thank you. Let me bring... <laughs> <laughs> what a statement. Let me bring this up. Yeah, so it seems like he has a wash. He has a wash of warmth. Mm -hmm. And then he goes over with white after to get the shape. Let me, let me look at this. This is pretty good. Mmm. Interesting. It's, oh! Oh no, never mind. You know, you know what I laughed at? What? I thought he did red line as well. <laughs> but that was me <laughs> on a multiply layer. I was like, oh! <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a drawing. <laughs> I see what he does. So, I think his his general approach... Ooh, look at this cutout. Mm. It's like he's cutting it out. I think his general approach is really thick silhouetted paint and that's generally kind of a how digital art people paint nowadays you know kind of the lasso silhouette in a way so 
Oh, wait, so yeah, so like you can like you kind of zoom in at the character's head there. So yeah, he did there, like white paint silhouette and then the detail on top. Is that what he did? Who knows? But this is oh. a good observation. You know, it's it, everything the shape, and maybe that could have contributed to our modern world. You know, wow, of yeah. having things into shape. So interesting. Let's make a shape. Oh, no lasso tool. No lasso tool. I'm gonna just use um, paint, mm. a very thick paint, and I'm gonna use my knowledge of placing warmth underneath. So let's do maybe like, ooh, like that. So maybe it's like thick paint. I feel like a lot of this class is just going to be them listening to us nerd out about how much we like various artists. <laughs> All right, we're going to the silhouette. I'm trying to avoid here um, using the lasso tool, even though it's it will probably help me really fast. But you know, I want to try and tap back into that old school mindset. Um, they probably had tape. Who knows how to how they lassoed? But I am going to use uh just a brush mm. Ooh, yeah notice this really nice mm, negative nice shape things. yeah really cool yeah the way he indicates material is very nice like um, the highlights on her shiny plastic hairpins are very bright than the highlights mm -hmm. on her kind of leathery looking right. collar and outfit aren't. I'm gonna code this. Yeah. I I'm using very thick paint. It seems like he loves to use kind of like a, a thicker, kind of a bolder paint, and that's why his stuff is cr looks creamy. It's very bold. Mm. Do you know what kind of paint he I think he's oil. Oil? Huh? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. You want to Google it real quick on your phone? Sure. Okay, while I <laughs> while I paint. <laughs> cool. We don't want to give any wrong information. <laughs> I know, like, the comments would be like, Ross said oil, right. but it's gouache. No. Uh, what paint? His line decker use. Let's see. His secret painting medium, a mix of oil and turpentine, produced Ooh. the rich fluid brush strokes and luminous paint surface that are the hallmarks of his work. I was right. Ooh. I was right about something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is the general shape. Very cool. Mm. And now let's build from this, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think, you know what? I'm going to put in the um, the grayness of the canvas because nothing in real life is pure white. Mm. And so let's just add a sense of canvas. Yeah, I think that idea that nothing in life is in pure white, you can even expound upon that. Even like a white shirt in the sun, mm -hmm. if you like color picked it, like in real life, it wouldn't be pure white. The only thing that's like really pure white is if you're like looking at like a lamp or a light source, like shining in your eyes. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you see pure white. Nice. Mm, yeah, I think it's reading right now. Reading really nicely. Ooh, this is hard now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and paint the hair. It seems like it's around this pigment here. And I'm gonna try and capture the brush strokes. I think the old masters, the best thing you can learn from are their brush economy and brush strokes. I, I think that's why a lot of people are attracted to people like Sergeant, Zorn, Line Decker, is for that old school technique. It doesn't look digital, mm -hmm. you know? It's traditional, and we are all trying to capture that traditional look. So. Ooh, that's, that's cool. Ooh. 
So what are you looking at here? Like the darkest areas? Or are you just trying to get the whole silhouette shape? I think a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Try my best to capture the whole silhouette area. And paint with the rhythms. Mm -hmm. So when you say with the rhythms, you mean kind of like in the same direction the hair is going, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And this actually helps train your eye to see color. I see a lot of people in that post their finished work, they're actually really accurate with the colors, yeah. which is insane. Um, but yeah, training your eye really trains how you see. Mm -hmm. And that's half of it, half of art, you know, trying to replicate what you see. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, look at that, that's gorgeous. That can be hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try my best to capture that rhythm. And the shape of the hair. See how everything is a shape? Mm -hmm. Everything is so beautifully designed. Things are simplified. I wish that we had a way to see what the lady in like in, in real life that he was mm. referencing looked like to know what liberties he took. Right. What stylization. But they didn't have good cameras and <laughs> well, yeah. All we have is this. I'm trying to get a very traditional looking brush. Mm -hmm. And by the way, people that do have my advanced brush set, you'll have access to all these brushes. Um, and I think over half of them are used to get that traditional foreign look. Mm -hmm. Like that one. Ooh. Mm. That's kind of nice. <laughs> like yeah. That. Yeah, I'm just experimenting as well, you know? Yeah, I like how you're kind of playing the one layer game here, making it very traditional like. Yeah, this is one layer. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to paint like Lion Decker a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I squint, all right. You know, it. I feel like the warmth of the undertone is really breathing through. And that's what I'm hoping is gonna be this. Mm. This will be the warmth of the undertone mm. right here. So like certain parts, you'll make the color either a little bit transparent or just leave it out altogether to have that um, kind of like orangish color show through. Yeah, it's like painting the blood of the piece. Mm. And wow. so I'm painting that base and hopefully I will not have to go back and add more saturation, but the saturation will exist. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I, I just noticed um, on your piece here, even this is big, medium, small. Mm -hmm. like, er, point, point it out. Point it out. Okay, okay, so the silhouette of like the, the shirt in the bottom part is kind of the big shape. And then there you have the hair, which is the medium. Or maybe like the, the skin tone is more of the medium and then the hair is smaller. So everything... Even this is broken up into thirds, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Three big shapes. Cool. Ooh. I'm just paying a little bit of the light. I'm building myself up, you know? I'm mm -hmm. trying to not be too ambitious and try and carefully look at what is presented. Like the colors mm -hmm. and trying to nail that. Yeah, the piece is a lot more yellow. And so I think as I build my paint, I will build it more yellow. So I started with the red because I saw this. Mm. I started with that bright red undertone because I saw that thumb. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the accurate color. And so I will keep building it more yellow. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'll, I'll keep turning towards the light. Yeah. If you would have started with that kind of like yellow, like let's say you took the original piece, you color picked it, you grabbed that kind of yellow and made that the undertone. Do you think that would make it kind of look maybe a bit lifeless on top or what? I think so. I think we we're attracted to this, uh, like a feeling of sun sun kiss or saturation or vibrancy and i think it 
could feel a little like sick and dull mm -hmm. if we started with yellow and kept it yellow. You know, mm -hmm. you want a variation. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of artists do that. Like they they almost like overemphasize the colors of the paint at first and then tone it down. It almost looks like clown paint. Like mm -hmm. oh man, the cheeks are so pink or the nose is so red, and then they always kind of like build on top of it and gradually take it away. I'm gonna focus on this. Ooh, more orange here. Mm. Just looking at the strokes, you know? Looking at these strokes and trying to get it. I'm gonna be bold here. I don't think this is what he's doing, but I'm just gonna be bold and try to get that light. With a little more yellow. Mm. See that? Mm. Mm. That feels like pretty spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's all about the strokes. And so I'm trying to mimic his stroke direction. I'm trying to under you know, I'm gonna play with different techniques. Ooh. Ooh, there's some canvas kind of glazing here that I can do. Ah, that's cool. Mm. Got those pockets of dark in there. Right, some dark accents. Yeah, I feel like this class and these studies are really gonna help the students, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you guys are doing your own studies, just try your best to imitate what they're doing practice your observation skill like what color is it and how do you get there etc maybe there's a process like i did where i started with something more warm and i build up into a more of a yellow mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of approaches that you guys can uh that do and if you love that approach start doing it into your own work mm -hmm. yeah i know like um certain traditional like classical masters work has become really influential lately in uh, digital art like Alphonse Mucha I see his techniques come up a lot in digital art nowadays mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing so there's definitely kind of like a, a renaissance of it so yeah I feel like the old masters are always coming back mm. <laughs> can't and get so, rid of them <laughs> hopefully when like in a hundred years we're considered some old masters <laughs> who will be studying a a rostral Nima piece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the hope, right? For my old master's piece, I did Nima on the beach. <laughs> Summertime Nima. I like that's the funny. use of bounce light. Uh, oh, if you guys were here uh, for, I think, class, what, 2.1, 2.2, we talked about rendering form, mm. right? And you can see here. 2.2, I believe. 2.2. You can see here that if this was a sphere, right? We have the light, we have the highlight, the light, the shadow, and the bounce light. Oh, wow. And so that's my observation here. So is that what you're looking for? Yeah, and so now I'm going to try and do it myself. Mm. So we have a bounce light here. That's um, interesting. Yeah, there's a terminator, which is the core shadow. You said before you like the word Terminator because it sounds cooler, right? It does sound cooler to me. Yeah, if I squint, it's, you see, I'm slowly entering more yellow, greener hues, right? Mm. But I started with the red. Um, we'll see if that was a good decision or not. But now I'm kind of glazing over with the more greener yellow tones. But that red, it still has an impact. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I did it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll all just pretend we didn't see you uh, cheat and change the hue saturation. What are you talking about? On this traditional study. <laughs> you want me to go back? No, no, no. <laughs> I can make it legit. I can manually watch you paint, repaint the background now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, my job here is to try my best to capture the likeness and then we'll move on to Sergeant. Mm. So, after capturing. Yeah, a lot more greener hues, and I'll slowly put that in. Wow, all this is so interestingly complex. I'm going to merge my line art and my real layer, <laughs> my paint layer, and start painting like him. So Ooh. here you're carving out the shapes, kind of yeah. like how he would, right? Yeah, I'm carving out the shapes. Still in one layer. No, one mm -hmm. layer here. Oh, except for the background. Um, all right, we have a lot of yellows. Kind of like, not nasty yellow, but by itself it could look nasty. Mm. Ooh, mm. interesting. Line dagger was so good. <laughs> I do want to commend the boot campers. Yeah. With um, so in the master studies, they all, those of them who added flares added it so subtly. It was lovely. They're like <laughs> um, one point one, one point two. It's like okay, guys, tone down the flares. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> you guys did a great, great job yeah. with your recent finished work, your recent assignments. Yeah, they're. I, I ask my Twitch all the time, are you guys getting better? Like that that's the main point. Mm. If you guys are getting better with every class, with every assignment, then I've done my job. You know, I, I feel like I'm trying my best to teach some of the golden tips that I've learned. And so far the feedback has been incredible. Yeah, definitely. And I've always, at least for my personal work, I found that master studies have always like, like the quickest way for me to improve personally. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hopefully. Is working and we, we haven't had i mean the, the assignment didn't come out that long ago so we still have no. like a lot of people still working on it so i right. can't wait to see everyone else's stuff yeah definitely all right i'm squinting i'm making it a little more accurate this is the juice i think mm -hmm. if i can nail that i feel like i've done my job that's my objective here i'm gonna try my best to nail that beautiful shape mm -hmm like simplicity complexity oh yeah so if i squint you know this whole cheek area is very simple um and everything else had a lot more stimulation a lot more activity and i'm gonna try my best to do that yeah in the original piece there's like everywhere you look is very complex like the fabrics have all these crazy folds but the face itself where the complex of the face meets a simple background is where the focal point is just because that contrast i think right yeah nice mm. slowly but surely i'm gonna try to add you know what i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna push this part okay um so we already have this color i think mm. uh let's, let me try a brown to lead into our highlight yeah trying to capture these strokes see that mm -hmm. and then i'm going to use that saturation in between the highlight Ooh, Ooh. you see that mm -hmm. and now i'm going to do the highlights it seems like it's about this color Ah, mm. that nice. Yeah. Yeah, repeat myself here. Try to capture the flow. And this is where mark making comes in. You know, pe people always ask like, oh, you know, your painting look traditional or you have traditional looking techniques. It's all about understanding kind of the old masters, their techniques, you know, the kind of brush economy, the different brushes, and how to use that brush to describe form. Mm -hmm. And that's literally all it is. Um, it's me kind of understanding traditional techniques and trying to apply that. Now 
Nice. Go ahead and go my own. There it is. That's a bird. How's it looking so far? Yeah, it's definitely coming along. It's yeah. Like any of the individual colors, like color picks, especially like those yellows there are really like ugly colors, but colors so relative that like it looks good because it works with the piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you see that? It's more bluer. It's more saturated. Oh. And so I'm gonna keep that in mind. And if I squint, if you look at the gray. Mm-hmm. See that? Mm-hmm. So I'm noticing that. I'm gonna do a little bit, but remember, this is this seems like final touches. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do a little bit, and then save it. Yeah, it feels like on a piece like this be so tempting just to hop into those little hatch marks on the skin. Right. Wait, you're exercising good self control. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. You know what I kind of want to do as well? What? Ooh, it's kind of an experiment. Hold on. I'm going to merge my background <laughs> and subject and make it like I'm sergeant. Boom. That's it. Ooh. It's done. <laughs> I want to maybe take it to 80, like 75% of kind of what I want start the sergeant one and then at the end i can come at it with a fresh eye mm. so i might do that yeah Ooh, you know what let's try to capture these creamy strokes so you see this this has a little like texture in it mm-hmm. and it needs to be more creamy it needs to be more opaque and so i'm going to try to find a brush um that has a little more Opaque. Looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. And what he does is he carves out. I'm going to try to capture his rhythm. It's come along. Yeah. Man, initially I wanted to pick one artist and spend <laughs> all this time making it perfect, but I'm trying my best to capture the juice of each artist. I think it's a good variety though. Like on the previous lesson also, um, there was a distinction between, okay, this is more realistic. This is more stylized approach. And I think it's like good to kind of cover how different artists approach both of them. Mm-hmm. Because this is obviously more stylized. Definitely. Um, but, I mean, I'm going to completely shift gears in a bit. And a lot of you guys really wanted to see Ross do Lion Decker. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like it's paying off. <laughs> I feel yeah. like it's the... Uh, if I squint, I'm really happy with my rhythms. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like this... In the rhythm, you know? Yeah. And I'm really trying to capture that. And I feel like that's what I'm really proud of capturing with Line Decker. He's all about the rhythm of the shapes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I am doing my study mm. properly. <laughs> there seems to be, if I squint, I haven't nailed the color of this. It, it looks like leather or some fabric. Um, and so I'm going to try my best to capture that. And I might have done that. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. It's crazy to think also that like there's so much detail here, but this is still just a cropped, um, zoomed in piece of Lion Decker's bigger work. Right. As we mentioned before, crop in any part of the painting and it will be beautifully designed. And that's what I'm trying to teach as well. Yeah, I mean, we'll announce your assignment later with more details, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, feel free if 
for your homework, you find a master study, and you just want to focus on just the, the but, like a section. Yeah, or a section. Feel free to do that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value um, that can be learned from both Sergeant and Linebacker. And the one thing I want you guys to take away from here is to be better designers and more thoughtful about what you draw and paint mm -hmm. and understand that, you know, the best artists are actually designers. They design the light, the composition, the shapes, and walk away from this class being a more thoughtful, intentful artist and designer. Um, that's, that's all I can ask for. Mm -hmm. What's up? I thought you were giving her a. I thought you were using your flare to give her a mole on her chin. Oh, I'm just <laughs> testing the the value out. Nice. Mine definitely feels a little more warm. Um, so we'll see how I will make it a little more yellow. Mm. I mean, oh, <laughs> technically, I can just do this. There you go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know what? I'll just commit to that. Okay. Okay. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> but but you see, oh, this is a great, great point that I'm going to make here right now. Okay. You see how it loses the warmth? Oh, yeah. If you squint, where's that red warmth? Oh, it kind of looks like a zombie now. Right. And so initially, I was going to build it up to here. Mm. So uh, let me try this. I'm going to duplicate it. Yeah, I think that's why the old masters didn't use um, hue saturation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to bring in some of that warmth back. So you just duplicated the layer, tweaked the colors, and now you're kind of erasing out areas that you want it to be warm? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of the best of both worlds. Hmm. Ooh, Ooh, very nice. Wow, which one's Lion Deck, which one's Ross? I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, let me make some kind of a big decisions and impressions here. For example, I'm going to put this hairpin, and then uh, in a minute, we'll start Lion Decker. <laughs> we'll start with Sergeant. Sergeant. <laughs> okay. It's bad that um, hair clump is very juicy in yours. This? Yeah. Thank you. I don't know. I, I don't want to ruin it with this ear, but she has ears, so damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to carve it out. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay, we'll let the ears stay. You hear it? You heard it here first, y'all. Ross is anti ears. <laughs> And then, ooh, what is this color? Let's see if I can nail it. It's like, it looks like a weird... Oh! Wow, that's impressive. Oh, hold on. Oh, almost! Wow. It feels like a right here around there. Nice. And the same color kind of comes up in um, the hair on yours and Lion Decker's as well. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Are you proud of me? Very proud. I'm doing it. I'm doing the thing. Wow, you're an official artist now, Ross. <laughs> Alright, let me try and capture... This is the... Remember, I said this is the part I wanted to capture? Mm. And so, I'm thinking about the form. You know, being a thoughtful artist, not just putting a random stroke. Think about these forms. Following the rhythms. And I know you didn't do it, but if if need be on studying this, you could totally draw form lines over Lion Decker's piece as well to get like the forms of the face also. Like, yeah. You can use old other tools in your tool belt for this. Right. For example, um well, let's do that. It would be like that. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Use as many tools in your tool belt, my my goal is to give you tool, you know, one step at a time, mm -hmm. observation, analyzation, farm lines, everything builds up upon each other. 
And so, yeah, if you think one area can help you, please use what I've taught you. Mm-hmm. Who is your favorite old master, Ross? Ah, oh, man. man, that's hard. <laughs> I juggle between a few. <laughs> mm. Um, I really love Soroya, I really love Zorn and Sargent, you know, those really speak to me. I really also love like Alphonse Muka, you know, that's like a great artist and designer, so. I should have figured it'd be the ones that you put in the poll. <laughs> <laughs> because I think there's so much about, hey, you know what? A lot of people want to try to like paint and draw like me. Mm. I'm trying my best to show them where I came from. Mm, yeah. So. Yeah, I went through my. I want to draw like Ross Ross face, and then I'm really? like, really? Yeah, I want to draw like Stella. Whoa. I oh, know there, there was a period where I was like, I want to get into portrait art. Let me go through like all all of Ross's old like uh, that uh, YouTube portrait videos. Wow. Then I'm like, okay, well, but I want to draw like Stella. What is your style then? Uh, I don't know. Big round eyes. Oh. Focusing on light. Lighting. <laughs> lighting and big round eyes. Yep. Viz dev lighting, big round yeah. eyes. I can't wait for people to do a master study of your work. You know? You know what? I'm really dissecting these big round <laughs> eyes. <laughs> it's just a moment here and she's... I love these eyes and just the the light that these eyes shine through. (laughs) Okay, Ross. (laughs) What? (laughs) Mm. Let me add a little bit of this. Ooh, see that? Mm. Building on top of each other. Nice. Yeah, I can keep doing this for hours and hours and hours. But yeah, sometimes have like a background TV show Mm -hmm. or mainly focus on this. Just trying your best to capture and learn something new. Yeah. Like a new technique. If you guys learn something from every single study you do, I mean, I, that's that's what you want, right? Yeah. Just to keep finding new tools under your tool belt, new techniques to use. Yeah, if you learn only one thing from every drawing you do, and you do one drawing a day, then that is 365 new things you do by the end of the year. Yeah. Fun fact, Ross was dreading this part. What are you talking about? I was just indicating. I'm gonna stop in a minute. <laughs> nice. Alright, I all right, now are you ready for the juice? Yes. I'm just gonna make a new layer. <laughs> um, but if you guys really wanna see this, this is just uh probably one of the juiciest parts of the painting. Those little stray hairs, yes. Mm. Patrons are like, we sat through over an hour of listening to Stella ramble just to see that. <laughs> the stray hairs. The stray hair. Gorge. Mm, lovely. Wine decker wine is so good. <laughs> Do you have a favorite old classical master that you're gonna study from? Mm, probably Soroya. Ooh. I'm into uh, color and light and stuff and yeah. stuff's very nice. We get it, you like color and light. I like color and light, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Nice. Mm, that just line very obvious down here. Yeah, in the last couple of minutes, it suddenly just like really popped with those little details. We do before and afters. Mm. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. We just bring this forward, and that's probably his last step. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to draw on some of these lines here. No line here. I'm gonna perfect this a little better. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, it's really gorgeous watching um, you carve out the shapes with the background. I feel like that's lost a lot in digital art. It's like, oh, we have to be so not non destructive. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's on its own layer. You don't really carve out with the background color as much, but it's very, it's very aesthetic. Smiling. I'm still tilted. You, you're like, oh yeah, you know, there was a, the phase. I, I had a rock straw phase, and then I, I want to be my own artist now. I'm like, what? Oh, I'm tilted. <laughs> she has so, nothing to sorry say. Sorry if that offends you. <laughs> Okay. It's okay. You went through your Jamie Jones phase and now you want to be your own artist too, right? Sure. Mm. Nice. Mm. A squint. I think uh, we brought to a cool place and you could tell that if I just keep working on it and keep working on it and keep working on it, um, eventually I'll get closer, closer, closer. But I think right now um, it's been like an hour 20 mm. um we'll take a little small break and then i can teach them a moth sergeant and then we can go back to this maybe spend like a last five minutes with some fresh eyes mm -hmm. looking at it and making our last minute adjustments yeah i think it's fair that piece took line decker more than an hour to do so <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we forget that sometimes, like, oh man, I can't make it look like Michelangelo's, you know, painting on the Sistine Chapel. It's like, well, did he do it in 40 minutes? No. How long did he do it for? Uh, probably more than that. Well, probably like 30 years of experience plus months and months of painting, you know. Oh my god, we don't have months! Okay. Ooh, that's actually a real... I, I'm yeah. impressed. Very nice. Alright, reset your brain. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh. Ooh, you can tell that like it had the Ross flair to it. <laughs> like this is Line Decker, you know. I will never be Line Decker, but I'm my own artist, and you can tell that this is like a Ross studying Line Decker. Yeah. Right. Yeah, cool. like just like little pieces, like where um like the bottom of the chin has that dark line art, just th things like that that really do show the Line Decker style, but makes it really pop. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah, I really, I actually really love the treatment right here. Mm -hmm. It's like a really nice shape rhythm. I'm really happy about. I love this part that I did here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I like art because sometimes you're just like, oh, I kind of liked what I did, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, we'll take a small break mm -hmm. and we'll check back with you soon and do the second half of the class. See ya. Welcome back and welcome to the second half of class where we'll be studying Sergeant John Singer Sergeant. Yes, this is probably a Jamie Jones' favorite artist. Also, one of Craig Mullen's favorite artists. A lot of people's favorite, favorite artists. artists. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so excited to dive into Sergeant, and I'm really excited to study Sergeant because I've studied Sergeant a few times, and his work is just masterful. Um, wow. And Maybe if you don't know who Sergeant is or you don't know why, maybe I can teach you. Uh, mm -hmm. Because actually when I started, like very beginning of my career, and people said Sergeant, I'm like, I don't really see what they see. Mm. You know? Because maybe my eyes aren't trained yet. Like, I don't think this is beautiful, whatever. 
I don't know what my 15, 16 year old thoughts were. I think back then I just liked StarCraft, WarCraft, <laughs> like blue lights, metal, mech, and some- I just want to draw anime. This some, isn't what I want to draw. Exactly. It's not my style. Anime girl, like this is not my style. But as I progressed in my journey, as I studied more conspar and traditional painting, I was like, okay. And now I understand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we'll get a few and then we will start studying one. Nice. So, wow. <laughs> Do you see it? What I see? Or? I don't know what you see. You know what I see? I don't I, know what you see. I, I think this is gorgeous. I think it's gorgeous too. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. And one, the first thing I've noticed is how warm it is. Mm. And they started also uh, with a kind of burnt sienna, mm. a warm tone underneath, like we did with the light decker piece. And so they built up from that wash. And that's the main reason why I make my wash because I mean, the old masters, they do it for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to follow in their footsteps. Yeah, I think it's really um, interesting to point out too, because what we were really talking about with Lion Decker was just his use of composition. And here mm -hmm. it's not about the composition, like no. the subjects right in the middle, but it's all about just like the colors and the paint. And the feeling. And the feeling, yeah. And I think that a lot of my fans and um, kind of friends and peers, they can tell I have a like a smidge of sergeant in my work. You know, mm -hmm. I love the brush strokes. I love kind of like the indication of kind of like a wet, rough feel, mm -hmm. but I choose where I want my viewers to look. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. It's so gorgeous. A sergeant is a master of edge control. Like this edge here, mm -hmm. Versus this edge here. Ooh. Yeah, you have one with a lot of contrast, and so one's kind of more of a lost edge where the shadow just kind of blends into the background. Right. You can probably see some of these techniques uh, through my piece uh, called Flourish. Remember that piece? I remember Flourish. Flourish of uh, Rothschild. Yeah. Give me a second. Our I'll... artist goals, he can just Google his own work. <laughs> <laughs> Let me paste it. Oh my God, it's my artwork wow. next to Sargent. But yeah, um, this is that example. You know, we have some softer edges back here and then I crisp kind of a silhouetted mm -hmm. her profile with a really dark, um, dark value. Mm -hmm. And that is a classical technique. A lot of classical artists do this. And let me try to find someone that does it here. Um, I saw one earlier. Was this one? Nope. I think there's the one in the woods. This? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it might be. So that's, that's what stood out to me, just like the complexity of the background, and then mm -hmm. hers is just one simple figure. Right. Let me look in my folder. There was a clear example. Found it. This. Mm, oh, oh see. you see that? I see what you're saying. Um, let me pull them side by side. But this is a classical technique where it's like a really bright figure silhouetted by a really dark background, but it feels very appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that is one technique that I learned from the old master. And just over time, as I kept studying, um, like Sargent, you know, Zorn, Soroya, I picked up more and more and more techniques. Mm -hmm. One thing I love here that I'm gonna observe is the shadow color is an orange. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. It's a really nice orange. And Sargent does a beautiful job at having really uh, soft skin mixed with beautiful textures of the dress and the complementary of the soft skin mixed with a textured dress creates a beautiful simulation and uh, kind of like vibrations within your brain. Mm. Yeah. Take my, my work. <laughs> that, that's never fair, putting your work right overlapping Sarge. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I think one thing why artists, modern artists are attracted to Sargent is it seems modern. His A lot of his techniques and shapes are feels very futuristic. For example, this one. Mm -hmm. I think this is a gorgeous representation of 
This looks super modern, actually. Yeah, it looks right? like some, um, I don't know, high-end fashion, see down a runway kind of, like, mindset. Yeah, it feels futuristic, clean lines, um, the triangle shapes. It's a mix with the fluffiness mm -hmm. of the sheer fabric. I think it's gorgeous, you know, and this was painted in uh, 1886, but for amazing. some reason it stands out today and I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is this highlight color, this white, doesn't read as the pure white, but it's just, it fits inside the painting very beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sargent was always really good at having patterning fade into the shadows, but you can still read it, and then popping back up. Mm. Yeah, so why people love studying Sargent is for those brush strokes. His brush strokes are just so vivid and it feels very, it feels like it has life, you know? Yeah. And I think that's why people uh, prefer kind of this uh, rough, brush up look let me try to imitate it real quick um one of my favorite ones mm -hmm. you know has a wet look like people are attracted to that because it feels um like it has character yeah and it feels like it's alive versus you know like leonardo da vinci no shade by the way no shade <laughs> with really kind of cl super classic masters like um like da vinci the name of the game back then, you know, was to get realism. Yeah. 100% realism, no interpretation elsewhere. Realism was king. And now it's all about impression. It's all about character. It's all about style. Mm -hmm. It's all about foundations mixed with indication. And so, like, the industry had changed greatly. But back then, it was all about 100% realism. And nowadays, it's more about your individual um interpretation and indication yeah yeah um because the all of the old old masters like da vinci you know they focus so much on rendering and that's also something that i feel like a lot of like new artists also get stuck into like over rendering and over noodling but then mm -hmm. artists like sergeant some of the lines like he put down like one rough line to indicate maybe like a necklace or something and he mm -hmm. just got around the first time and left it he didn't spend more detail than he needed you know right Whereas Line Decker, mm -hmm. I feel like redraws the same thing over and over and mm -hmm. over again. I feel like Sargent finds his shapes through the magic of painting. Mm -hmm. He puts the stroke down and fixes it, puts the strokes down and works on it. You know, everything is kind of in character. It almost, it feels thoughtful, intentful, but not like planned. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't feel like, okay, I wanted this to look exactly like this and it doesn't feel that way you know it doesn't feel robotic it feels more organic and fresh and alive and he's able to do that just from the magic of painting and creating yeah, yeah. i like how we have two different artists from very different ends of the spectrum on this um and they're both right you know neither of them did anything wrong right. it's all just personal interpretation let me bring in uh Line Decker next to Sergeant. Ooh. Ooh. Epic art battle. Epic of art battle, I know. <laughs> but you can tell with Line Decker, everything is there for a reason. He designed it. He maybe drew over, drew the head at least five times. Mm. You know, he wants it to look exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And that's so intentful. And then we have John Singer Sergeant, where he finds the rhythms and the life and the character and the painting in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels very in the moment. So yeah, um, that being said, let's teach you guys some techniques. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am actually really attracted to this painting. <laughs> mm. um, it looks hard, <laughs> but should we do it? Uh, we should. We should? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm going to choose because... Uh, since we split this in half half mm. you know we don't have like a full two or three hours to spend on this so i'm going to choose where i'm going to spend my time are you going to crop it or just kind of choose like only indicate some parts what do you mean 
I'm going to mainly focus on um, uh, the head and the torso and maybe some of the ribbons, but we'll see what we get there. Oh. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> so, uh, whenever I do studies, again, I'm trying to understand how what their approach is and what they're thinking about and maybe um, how I can approach it in the same way. And it seemed like they start with a wash. So are you gonna draw another um, graph on top of this one or are you just kind of hopping right into it? I think I'm just gonna hop right in and um, try to practice being sergeant and find my art in the moment. Mm. So less planning here. And I, to be honest, this is more the way I paint. I'm a feeler, you know, mm. I like to feel the pigment. Um, a lot of my pieces are kind of a, just found in the moment. I'm not planning that much. Maybe I, ha I have an idea like, oh, there's gonna be a cat here, but I'm never like, okay, this is exactly how I want it. A lot of my decisions and my final pieces never look like how they started. Mm. Yeah. So we're gonna start with, Ooh. Oh, oh, I'm excited. Mm. I feel like I'm in my element. You know, I feel like uh, I'm just gonna study Sergeant. I'm a painter. And uh, that's that's a cool thing I think about like life. We are attracted to different things. You know, mm. I love Japanese anime and I love concept bar digital painting like Sergeant. <laughs> and my work feels like hopefully a marriage, something in between, right? So. Let's go a little deeper. I'm noticing purple, right? Yeah. I'm gonna it's try cool. to add some of that purple in. Ooh, trying yeah. to capture some techniques. So he probably started in a similar way. You can really tell uh, with the background, um, he started with a wash. Mm -hmm. So. And then I think he maybe carved it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at these landmarks. I'm looking at the landmark and I'm going to try to chisel a shape out. I just noticed we, you are drawing two very yellow characters today. <laughs> very yellow based. Very ye yellow feeling week. Maybe that's uh, even feeling a little yellow. Sounds good. Yeah, one thing I remember um, in my studies is uh, a lot of the masters also do this. You know, they take some pigment mm. and they sketch around and that's kind of what i'm doing i'm kind of forming the shape here so they actually kind of like s sketch with the paintbrush they don't like do like an underdrawing or studies or whatever sometimes they probably do but i think i'm approaching it the way i want to paint it and learn it mm. and so with the first one line decker i had more of a underdrawing i had more of a sketch but with this one i'm just going to jump right into painting cool Yeah, Ross digitally paints. <laughs> Just watch the latest video. You probably know what that means. Cool. Um, I'm going to... You know what? There was no <laughs> soft round brush back then. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a little... I wish there was. <laughs> so we're going to use something else. Yeah, on um, on your guys' assignments, definitely feel free if you want to challenge yourself or if you want to you know, see what it looks like, just try to get brushes that look like traditional materials. Like mm -hmm. whether it's in the brush that you have right online, like there are a gazillion brushes for oh, any there, program. There's so many brushes these days. Oh my goodness, yeah. So many great brushes that uh, mimic real materials. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a watercolor painting, you can get watercolor brushes for Clip Studio, Procreate, Photoshop, whatever you use, like, play around. It's, it's yeah. fun stuff out there. Definitely. Nice. I'm I'm capturing the energy. You know, I feel like I'm capturing the essence of mm -hmm. Sergeant right now. You know, it's about capturing that feeling, the emotion um, of when someone looks at your piece, of what you want to say. And right now, I feel like the energy of what I've displayed um, is kind of on a similar wavelength as Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Cool, I'm gonna try and go with the 
thinner brush and carve out some of these shapes here. I know I've said it in previous lessons, I just noticed also drawing um, your piece the same size as the one next to it in the same ratio helps a ton. Yeah, like accuracy and hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Yeah, no use in trying to like do the mental gymnastics of trying to draw it bigger than your reference image, just next to it helps a study. Mm -hmm. Nice. So the homework, we'll tell them later, but are you going to do two Cervoia studies? Uh, uh, let me take a look at what pieces speak to me. <laughs> nice delay. <laughs> nah. Now, and if you're not sure who you want to study, find a modern master who you like or a modern digital artist and see who inspires them. Just, yeah. That's how I even learned about Soroya. Because, like, um, I was saying with Smith, he just talked about him a lot. And I'm like, oh, who's this guy? And I'm a fan. So, Dude, he is amazing. He like, is, yeah. Soroya, I actually wanted to dive into. Um, but I feel like I'm kind of known for kind of, like, both line decory, sergeant things. And <laughs> He didn't win the poll, sorry. Yeah. The patrons' okay. fault. Shame on you, patrons. <laughs> Kidding. Ooh, okay. Nice. Mm. Trying to capture right now? You know, I'm thinking about light and dark, light and dark. So when I see Sergeant painting, everything can be broken up into a light shade and then a shadow shade. And it seemed like it's a really nice orange. I really love. Ooh. Mm. I'm gonna try and capture some of the oranges. <laughs> that sounds that sounds interesting. Capture some of those oranges. <laughs> oh, English. Your multiple word uh, uses for a word. Oh, this part is gorgeous. Mm. You see that? Yeah. Now that I'm like looking, I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to tackle that. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna save, now that I'm thinking, right, in layer, I'm gonna save these flowers. They're the brightest part of the painting. Um, so I'm gonna wait. Do that. So what made you select this picture in particular for your master study? I think I was just attracted to it. You know, sometimes you're, like, you really like paintings and I feel like there's a beautiful rhythm. Mm. And this feels like such a fresh painting. I could stare at this forever. Mm. Like her skin had a different characteristic than the dress. And then the flower feels like its own character. And I just really love um, looking at it. And I think it speaks to me. And I think that's why I'm doing it. I think it's interesting what you say about the characteristics of the skin and the dress. Because they are like the same paint colors, it seems, but the, the textures are handled very differently. Mm -hmm. They had cooler hairdos back then, not gonna lie. You think so? Yeah, maybe I just... Maybe, maybe Why do you hate our current life? I don't hate our current life. I'm saying our hair looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and indicate some of this. You know what? I I might have some fun and stylize it, actually. You know? Like, put some Rossism in it, you know? <laughs> hey, I got that 5 or 10%. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, that can uh, maybe, like, whoosh, ooh. <laughs> Give her some wings. Give her some wings? Oh, that's true. Give her some dragon wings. Give her some dragon armor. <laughs> Like a glowing orb with like the whoosh, Wow, I feel called out it. right now. I feel called out. The little highlights in the inner corners of her eyes. I can go all day. <laughs> Whoa, keep going, keep going. You can go all day, keep going. Uh, what else do I do, Stella? Well, you're not allowed to color dodge it. No, I'll, I'll color dodge it. Oh, okay. I will. Um... <laughs> Yeah. High pass? 
High pass. Okay. All right. <laughs> high pass. High pass. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, and I'll go in your second brain, pull something out. Oh, Dang! Wow. I the color range. Um, the levels. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. 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 I feel like. I feel like you should be teaching this class. <laughs> It's like, dang, you know more about my painting process than I do. No. Yeah, right now, uh, I'm just making big decisions and honing in. Mm. And so I'm making marks. Um, it seems like Sergeant likes to do kind of like the marks. And I'm trying to paint like him here. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, there is a nice big light mark here. And I'm trying to... Think if I would traditionally paint this, you know, um, I would probably indicate. You know, this is a little lighter here. Um, a dash of this light. You know, trying to follow the rhythms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Ooh. So I know you're. Yeah, you know, obviously approaching this a little more like your natural paint style. What are like, the main things um, in Sargent's style that you are studying at the moment or trying to replicate? I think he does a really good job at understanding what to keep and what to leave out. Mm. For example, these eyes are generally very soft. Yeah. You know, there's not like, I don't see any eyelashes. Like, he, I don't see an eyebrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just very beautifully uh, composed mm -hmm. to tell us what he wants us to see. And so I'm trying to understand those decisions. Why did he, if I squint, you know, this the whole eye socket feels very soft. Mm. And then the only hard parts are like, like in the dress. We kept consciously the softness of the skin. Mm. And so I'm just trying to understand um, the different decisions that he's making. Mm. I wonder how long that poor model girl had to stand there in that very uncomfortable looking dress as he painted her. <laughs> Oh my god, this is her waist is snatched. There's probably some like three courses under there. I don't know how courses work, but <laughs> how do, wait, do you know how courses work? Do you just tie it, right? Uh yeah. I mean I see it in movies. Yeah. Yes. I, you have as much knowledge as me, Ross. Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I know. You are a your... woman. <laughs> Alright, well. Yeah. It looks like she's from Japan, <laughs> right? Oh, sorry, my rendition. Oh, like my, <laughs> my rendition. Yeah, we. Uh... Uh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, you see how he groups like the nostril. I think a lot of modern artists they take inspiration from Sargent's, you know, mm -hmm. and how he groups shapes. And so I'm trying to just study that, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. This is a little early. Ooh. Nice. Mm. That reads pretty cool. Yeah, I like how just like the line decker, you're kind of building. You're you're building for the from the warm onto those yellow tones. You didn't just like start with it and make it kind of look dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, just trying to understand um, the different decisions that he's making and try my best to paint, you know? Mm -hmm. And by me studying this piece and me studying Sargent, the next time I paint something similar, I have experience. And I can maybe like subconsciously bring those techniques in or even consciously. And it'll even start to adapt a more Sargent feel. Mm. Yeah, if you do a lot of different master studies from different masters, you'll start picking and choosing little, like, I don't know, perks from each one that you want to put in your work. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh. I'm looking at that line. Mm. That shape right there. I want to nail that. So it's very sharp. Mm. And then all this is soft. Ooh. Mm, like it's a lot of lost edges there. Yep. I was doing a lot of master studies recently, and I did one of um, one of Ross's pieces, and I sent it to him, and he just responded with "lol." <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. W which one? It was a uh, I don't know the one with Faye and Ami in the forest with the trees. <laughs> it was like the oh I said a wait, wait I said "lol." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, oh. I'm sure I meant something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> what? Oh. Uh. Yeah. Maybe I had a funny caption. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> hey, here's, here's a study I did of well, one of your pieces. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm putting my own kind of Ross twist on this. Film, but you see that? Mm -hmm. It's a little more kind of like... Easter? Easter? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, huh? Um... But yeah, I'm just looking at, like, like I'm squinting, I'm looking at the points, and I'm trying to lay down my stroke. Mm -hmm. And that is something I learned from Sergeant, and that is something I put into my work. Every stroke I do, um, it's for a purpose. And I keep control of the until I get that right stroke. And so he taught me to be a, well, any artist, every artist, every study, it teaches me to be a more thoughtful designer and thoughtful artists mm. and think about what show I'm putting on. Yeah, so you're really kind of like, you're using a larger brush and just kind of laying down all the strokes on that light side, right, of her face? Yeah. Mm. Ooh. It's actually uh, warming. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, um, I like how you like kind of replicated the, the coolness in the hair, like the environment color shows up in the hair a lot mm -hmm. on both of yours. Nice. This is fun. Dude, I can't wait for you guys to start the assignment, you know? Feel free, yeah, feel, this is more than a 5-10% flare right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what? If it's fun, feel free to do it. Because at the end of the day, art is supposed to be fun. And it, like enjoy the boot camp. I think some people stress out, like, oh, you know, I'm, a, like, I'm not where I want to be. Mm. Or I, I feel like I'm just starting and people are so ahead of me. It's like... Dude, at the end of the day, we got into this to build character and build worlds and have fun with art. It's a creative endeavor. It's supposed to be fun. So, yeah. Right. So, I'm trying to have some fun with this piece and trying to study it, trying to make it accurate, um, but having a little bit of uh, Rossisms in it. Mm -hmm. a lot of, it's very yellow. It <laughs> and is. Now that I've noticed, like, very, very yellow. All right, there's a, ooh, there's a really nice pocket right here. Mm. And so that's something I look for. Um, and I put it into my work a lot. If there is a, a section in painting where I can describe form and silhouette, ooh, I'll put that pocket in. Mm -hmm. Trying to follow the form and shook of what I see. Nice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think it's uh moving along. Yeah, it's definitely coming. Um, yeah. To bring back some concepts from like earlier lessons, you spent a lot of time really nailing that silhouette and now you're working in, inside of it if right. you, know, you would have just kind of rushed through it um and it wasn't accurate you'd be having a lot more problems at this stage correct so yeah take your time to try and make your 
silhouettes read nicely, accurate as possible. I had some liberties with it. Uh, but yeah, feel free to spend spend that time making that understructure strong. Mm -hmm. And so that way you'll have an easier time building on top. Such a nice shape right here. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to get that. Yeah, I love how um the shadow on the on the bottom of the nose connects to the shadow kind of of the brow line on his. Like it's all one root shape mm -hmm. that goes down the nose. Ooh, that pops. That pops? Like, <laughs> boop, pop. Yeah, just having some, some fun. Trying to capture it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I like that. Um, which one is more was more challenging for you, or is Lion Decker or this piece right here? Uh, we'll, we'll see, but <laughs> I think Lion Decker because I feel like I'm more of a painter mm. than a, uh, a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I can, like, like, I love experimenting, you know, I'm all about expressionism. Like me as an artist, I'm sure a lot of people follow me because I try my best to live through my art. You know, I love to like find my pieces and moments in the moment mm -hmm. rather than have everything planned. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, it's chaos and it, it's uh, order, you know? Mm. Some people paint more orderly, some people paint more chaotically. I'm a little more chaotic. Mm. <laughs> My layers are everywhere, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, indicate this. Ooh. How about you? Do, you? do you feel like you're more of a order or a chaos or? What's, uh, the, what's the ratio? Very more systematic order. Like, okay, mm -hmm. sketch it out, lay in my local colors, yeah. put in my adjustment layer, you know. <laughs> and maybe that's why you're a cool student voice. You know, you let, like, you're asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm just like, yeah, you know, just feel nice. How do you know what to do, Ross? Well, I feel, I feel good. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I like, it's nice that we have different approaches mm -hmm. and we can uh, balance each other out. Yeah. Hey, when I make it big someday, you can be my student voice. How's that? Ooh, uh, y'all heard that? <laughs> Damn, she's she's working here for what? Five months? <laughs> she's, Ross is going to work for me one day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Woo. Damn. I'm trying to grab all these shapes together. Yeah, this arm is so juicy, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to try my best to also nail that part. Yeah, that bright orange is so unexpected and it, it works really works really well. Yeah. Just like before, I wish we had like photography of what the lighting situation was, what the model actually looked like cuz like most likely it wasn't this orange and warm and vibrant. He took a lot of liberties with it. Yeah, he did. And maybe even the painting has like, kind of like changed color over time. Like you never know. Right. All right. If I squint, ooh, I can even push this darker. The interesting is like you bring Sergeant back in a time machine. He's like, no, why are you drawing it so yellow? My painting yellowed over time. I wasn't supposed to be that color. Don't learn from that. <laughs> That's funny. Try to capture all of this. Mm. 
Yeah, this is the brightest part of the face. Mm. I'm trying to capture that. Yeah, everything is pigment built on top of each other. And so, I'm slowly learning that. This piece. Mm. Yeah, I think the colors are also all very harmonious in both of your pieces. I think part of that comes from the wash. You know, it all mm -hmm. starts with the same undertone, so you don't have any colors that look out of place. Like, the lighting affects it all the same, kind of. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Bows. I wonder when this piece was made. Who knows? I don't know. If you have the name of it, I can look it up otherwise. I don't. Well, if one of you guys figure it out, you can comment it on the Patreon post. <laughs> I think I'm really happy with this part. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a nice uh, balance and technique there mm -hmm. um, that I'm pretty proud of. Yeah, I, I noticed also when you zoom in, you got some of that canvas texture in there. I think it's from one of the brushes. It has like a canvas texture. Yeah. It works really well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that whole um, arm on the left side is just just lost in the shadow. It's very lovely. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. No. Yeah, I feel like I'm learning a lot from this. Um, I'm so, if I squint, it's more yellow, and I think that was my point before mm -hmm. about um, about building from the warmth and then going to yellow. So technically, it would be around there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to just. Double my layer again <laughs> and make it a little yellow here. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. And then I'm just going to erase some of the warmth on the outside of that. And then I'll merge it. Yeah. There. And uh, I think something I've learned here, and this is kind of my own technique uh, that I borrowed that I observed from the master and did it on myself is color dodge. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're tying that in. That was great. <laughs> um, ooh, you see that? It's nice. Is it nice? It's pretty. Uh, just a little, yeah, because it, if I squint, the values are just that much more prominent there. Mm. Ooh, yeah, color dodge your old master copies. <laughs> Hey, uh, few people know it was actually the secret technique to Sergeant's yeah. work. It's, it's he color had dodge. a bucket of color dodge. Yeah, he, uh, he washed over it. Uh, that's good. He had Photoshop all along. <laughs> the queen was like, I want a commission. I got you. He did it on Photoshop. Had had three versions, three <laughs> files, 800 megabytes. <laughs> uh. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I really like, um, even if it's like dark accents right here, mm -hmm. he, ooh, he has it spread all over. Yeah. And so I'm going to try and capture some of these dark accents. Yeah, I like the way he, he gets in like one stroke and he just kind of leaves it. Yeah. Versus line deck, which is like stroke, 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 stroke. Right. I think it's coming along really well. I'm still, ooh, oh, did I capture that? That's nice. What oh my you? god! Did I capture that? Wow. Yo, that's pretty accurate. Awesome. So how are you kind of tackling this dress or skirt here? Um, I think it's a little more organic, mm. but I'm looking at light shadow, light shadow, light shadow. There's light, there's shadow color. And so I think he's thinking about that too. There's a shadow color here, and there's a general light color here. Mm -hmm. One thing I could also do is because this has an edge, I can use my edge brush. Um, where is it? This one. Ooh. And I'm going to flip it. Ooh, you see that? What do you mean because this has an edge? What are we, what are we talking about? This section right here, mm -hmm. one side is sharper, one side is softer. Mm, I see. And so I have, a, it, I have a brush that does exactly that. Oh, I see. And so I'm going to try and... 
capture that technique. See that? Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that, that worked. I did something. <laughs> Nice. Ooh, that actually is uh, com coming together quite nicely. Yeah. With an orange back here. Ooh, that's actually pretty spot on. Was that like the, the darkest areas he used that bright red in? Is that, yeah, right is that his mindset? Mm -hmm. they, I'm just trying to, right now, I'm just trying to capture the impression of what I see. Mm -hmm. They kind of, it. I want to sell this form, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything is they kind of going into each other like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to capture all of his form. Ooh, that's nice. Mm. Capturing from the dress. I really want to nail I'm this part. I'm waiting for a juicy line. I know. I'm watching for it. Like, come on, come on. Oh my god, that's hard. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like the impression is definitely kicking in. No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A little wiggly boy. A little wiggly boy. Oh, for a second, I. Ah! <laughs> oh, did you feel that? Yeah. For a second, I, I thought that one was mine. <laughs> oh, so he was like, wow, it's looking great. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. All right, if I squint, there's a little more grays in here. You mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. A little more gray tone like that. So I'm going to add some of that gray tone in. Nice. But you see my process, right? I'm slowly building from the back up. Mm hmm uh, and I'm taking my time and being thoughtful about my, my decisions. Things are in, like kind of a, not guessed, but there is a sense of educational guess. Mm -hmm. You know, this feels like maybe he would have pushed it this way. Um, there is a light and dark, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm just trying to think like him and trying to paint like him. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Now time to work on the face a little more. Okay. It seems like he, she also has some sort of eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder when makeup was introduced. Ooh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Ooh, one thing I'm looking at, looking at is this corner right here. Right here. Oh yeah, a little, a little light peek through there. And so I'm gonna try and capture that dark corner. See, I'm control Z, mm. just, they're the perfect arc somewhere. I'm trying to capture. 
like how you keep zooming in and out, in and out, and like guild masters, they would like walk up really close and they stand far away. And they, really? Well, yeah. You, you see, like, like traditional painters, whatever, they they, they they step back a lot. And they say that a lot too. Like, oh, you have to step back from your keys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, same same techniques, just you know, a few hundred years later. <laughs> few hundred years later. This is not that. This is like a hundred years ago. Right? Yeah, 150 years ago. <laughs> Whatever. If artists a few hundred years ago did it too, we're off. You know what, guys? What? All right. Did she roast me for? There is a nice little <laughs> eye highlight. And that's why I added to my painting. Because Sergeant does it. And it's there. So, I'm gonna add that. Wow. Ooh, <laughs> yes! That little uh, gorgeous little highlight there. Hmm. Well. Okay, Ross is succumbing to the peer pressure of Sergeant, apparently. <laughs> yep. Sergeant peer pressuring me. I'll make a video about that. <laughs> There's some of that really nice red on this eye. Oh, yeah, wow. And I'm gonna kind of introduce some of that. Ooh. Ooh, I'm really careful with my strokes, um, and I think the patience is really paying off. I feel like uh, it's becoming very thoughtful and intent. Mm -hmm. Gas looking lovely. Oh, thank you. It, I, I wonder for the viewers at home, is it therapeutic for you guys? Just watching me kind of solve how I'm going to approach this. Mm. I'm going to save the flower for uh, nearly last. Ooh, see that? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Following the strokes of the dress with my brush. So I'm trying to think. I like that bow. The current women's fashion doesn't have enough big floppy bows. <laughs> what do we have nowadays? Uh, I don't know. Rips, you don't, what? Not, rip things. I don't know. Rip thing. Well, you've heard it here first, folks. Less ripped jeans, more big floppy bows. <laughs> Stella Fiora's fashion. Line. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, I really love this value here. Ooh. Mm. See that? Yeah. Really love that value. Ooh, cutting that corner. Nice. Wow, yeah. Wow, I can't. You know what? I'm kind of a little uh, surprised. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant's one of my heroes. So, trying my best to make him proud. Yeah, and just like before, Sergeant didn't do that entire portrait in 55 minutes and 3 seconds. <laughs> you know, so don't so don't feel down on yourselves, guys, if you're like, oh my gosh, it does not look like uh, I don't know, Da Vinci's whatever, you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, take your time, you know? I think we tend to rush things these days. I'm trying to take my time. Ooh, and notice the little intricacies. And I promise you, patience with these studies, you're really gonna surprise yourself of how 
much you can see and how much you're going to improve. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to see you guys study some old masters. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is like the, where's the cutoff between contemporary masters and old masters? What do you think? Like if they're, if they're not alive, then they're an old master? <laughs> um, hmm. I think old master is someone who's done peaked at a time where, you know, like, a they didn't have, like, in their generation. For example, Richard Schmidt just died. Mm. And he, I consider him a classical master, mm. even though he just recently died. It's like, he peaked during, like, um, I think the 90s, or even, mm -hmm. like, like a, maybe a little before. And so I think it's like, the time where I think you made the most impact. Um, yeah. So for me, I don't think I'm in, hopefully I'm not an old master. <laughs> I think if you're using digital art, you can't be an old master. True, exactly. So maybe the next generation when everything's like VR and robot, stuff like that, they can look back to, oh yeah, the digital art days. Yeah, we're the, the classical master roster. <laughs> um, uh. Okay, yeah, because I know like, some people would be like, oh, Norman Rockwell's not an old master. He's contemporary, you know, so. Sure, sure, sure. We won't be strict, so pick. Yeah. Pick, like, don't pick Aaron Blaze, you know. Right. Or Nathan Fouts, but pick someone <laughs> uh, from a little bit ago uh, when you do your studies. Or are you doing the Juicy Flowers? Yeah, I'm going to use oh, Juicy Flowers. Yes. Ooh, and I'm using 100% opacity. Nice. Creamy. And then now I'm adding it back over at the end. Right. Ooh. Mm. Cool. Nice. If I squint, definitely capturing that essence that I uh, I want. You no. Know, bright, bright flower. All right. Now I'm going to leave it alone for a I'm gonna try to capture this really juicy part. I don't think I've nailed yet. Hopefully we get there. Mm. Mm. Did women just like not have eyebrows back then? <laughs> they do. They're all out of eyebrows. Maybe they burn them off. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to pull. <laughs> Nice. Mm. I think it's definitely coming along. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that left arm and uh, her her right arm in shadows. Really nice. Yeah, seriously, people are like, "Oh man, mine doesn't look like it." Like, dude. Literally, he probably spent a month on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't even worry if maybe your study don't look exactly the same, you know? Maybe if you, obviously, if you spend a month on your studies, <laughs> mm -hmm. it'll look like this. It'll look like the original. I'm going to capture that really juicy mm -hmm. pocket. And probably also, like, this was a commission piece. He probably did sketches of the figure, probably right. did color roughs, you know. Mm -hmm. Other work we don't have.
I'm noticing a little trail off the hair. It kind of blends in. I, I knew it. I was like, no, you didn't. he's going to do it. No. He's going to do it. But yeah, how are you enjoying the Jar Boot Camp so far? I, uh, a little biased. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it's fun. I think it's great. It's definitely going more into the element of things that I enjoy doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> All the, yeah, master studies mm -hmm. and that kind of Yeah, well, stuff. well, I, well I wanted to like everyone to practice drawing first, you know. Oh, hundred percent. No, no, no. That's the progression you got to do it. And I'm just, I'm just saying. That now that we paid our dues, we're getting to the, the juicy stuff. This, this, the, the, the painting. Mm -hmm. All right, Ross. Not bad. <laughs> not bad, you little painter. You. <laughs> I feel like it's a. Uh, I feel like it's becoming. More of something I would paint, you mm -hmm. know, which is really cool. Uh, trying to capture some of the accuracy again, and I want to name like uh, pick pieces, pick pieces of the original that you really want to capture and nail. For example, this part I haven't nailed that yet, and so I'm gonna go back here and try and capture it. So what exactly? Ooh. What exactly are you, you know, focusing on? Right now, it's like the edges right or what? Yeah, just the edge control. I think there's some beautiful edge control um, that I almost have, but not yet. And I'm trying to get it there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And I want to nail this part as well. There's some really beautiful work being done. Clading over. What? I've just seen you do this so many times that I anticipate things. I'm like, he's gonna put a little light on the nose. I feel so examined. <laughs> and then I'm gonna work on. I actually really like my indication here. Mm -hmm. It feels very uh, modernly illustrative, you know? A little yeah. bit of Rossisms. Yeah. It it works because it seems very purposeful, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm intentionally not doing too much here. Ooh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I'm gonna work on this bow. All right, that's wrong. I'm gonna add a little more red pigment. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow, we've been doing this for, uh, for like almost four months. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy that I'm going to have to start labeling things 5.1 and 5.2 next month. Yeah. Uh, that's nuts. Oh, yeah. Next month, we're doing landscapes. Ooh, Ooh. Digital landscapes and portraits. Oh, yeah. The painting heads, right? Yeah. Which I'm very excited about. You know, Fun. we get to dive deeper into the surfaces of the face. You know, hard shadow, light shadow, light shadow. <laughs> wait, oh, wait what am I saying? Uh, hard and soft shadow. Hard and soft shadow. And kind of how to make portraits pretty. I think I have a lot of years of experience on studying the face mm -hmm. and how to make some portraits pretty and my techniques. And so I'm really excited to show you guys. Yeah, come come by here to learn about the hard shadow and light shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to capture some of this juicy sergeantness. Ooh, mm. you see that? Yeah. Actually, this is supposed to be a hard. I'll blend it. This makes me want to kind of like paint IRL again. 
Will you? One day. <laughs> One day. Have you painted traditionally before? Uh, not with oil. Not, not with oil? Was, just acrylics? Yeah. I was an online art student, so I had a still life acrylics class from my bedroom. Mm -hmm. Very weird. Difficult. <laughs> and now you're here. Now I'm here. <laughs> Bending it. Nice. Some of the white of the hair. If for the light of the hair, you're just pretty much using the background color, right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, a little bit. Like this gray here. Yeah. Um, ooh, this really sharp edge here. Ooh, actually really sharp for the ears. Mm. And then maybe some rossisms. Mm-hmm. Just some uh, nice little technique there. <laughs> Maybe some of the flower color. Add some nice highlights. Ooh, yeah. That, that like pops. Share the necklace. Uh, we'll see if we keep it. <laughs> Maybe she lost her necklace. She's so sad. <laughs> Please, sir. Give me back my necklace. Well, I'll trade you two kind of wealthy flowers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she modeled for so long. <laughs> the flowers started, flower started wilting. Nice. Kind of pop this. Oh no, I don't want to ruin this part, but I have to. Kill your darlings. That's true. Yeah, I feel like the shape, Northeast, you know, like my designer brain wants to bellow it out mm. to give some more, you know, differentiation. And so, I'm gonna a little, my own flair to it. Maybe just a little extra. Because you go in with the corset and then you go out, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm feeling. I'm gonna spend a little more on this and then we'll go back and check out the line decker. Ooh, yeah, let's do it. What do you think of the studies, Stella? How um, am I doing? <laughs> I think it's lovely. I love um, how loose the dress is and how a little more tightly rendered like the eyes and the face are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that kind of like style is very popular. Like like fabric and things being really loosely rendered, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like I've seen you do it before. Like other artists like WAP do that a lot too. It's like modern techniques coming back. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this area is very interesting to me. Uh, I'm gonna try some technique. Ooh. Yeah. You see that, all that technique there? Mm -hmm. That's really lovely. And that's why I'm gonna merge my flowers into it. Boom. You know, it'd be an interesting thing to do. I'm not saying we should do it. We can't don't have time, but it'd be interesting to take the two pieces you've done and then redraw them, but in the opposite one style. So try to draw oh. this piece in the Lion Decker style and the Lion Decker one in the Sergeant style. All right, one more hour. Let's go. I'm gonna go home, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're trapped. <laughs> Nice. Wow, very nice. Nice, nice, nice. Put some final touches on this dress. Ooh. 
うん。Yeah. We'll, we'll leave it open to you guys. If you want bonus points,、uh, you can try flip flopping master studies. <laughs> you don't get anything. I, I think a few people might take on that challenge. You know, I, that's why I'm putting it Knowing out. Knowing my audience, they love a challenge.、So、hey. That's why you're putting、yeah. it out there. Yes. I'm putting it out、uh, into the ether. Y'all can try it if you want. It may be interesting. And there we go. Lovely. How'd I do? I think you did great. Ah!、Uh, let me try to find. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Thing there. And let's go and check out the sergeant and see how he did. I mean, sorry,、the、the Lion Decker. Ooh! Oh. <laughs> cool. Nice. Looks、let's, very fresh. Wow. Look, looks very fresh. Let's put this side by side. Our two studies.、Wow. Nice. Hey, I'm happy. I, I was、uh, excited and scared for this, you know?、Mm -hmm. I think、um, excitement and nervousness are the same emotion. You can tap into one. And so I was both. <laughs>、um, I'm very happy with how they turned out. I'm going to, one thing I've noticed about my Lion Decker is adding a little more stroke. I'm gonna do that here.、Mm. You see that? Yeah. So it feels more lion decker y. Lion decker. Lion decker. Nice. So it feels a little more strokey, more lion decker.、Ooh. Yeah, the, the hair is that same glistening quality as in lion decker as well. Very pretty. You know, whenever I do a master study, I love looking at it not next to the original. It just always looks so much better. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, these are my two master studies today classical.、Um, or, originally, we were going to have this class focus on just one we can spend two or three hours on. But I think it's more,、uh, more versatile for you guys to learn two modern masters.、Mm -hmm. So we chose Line Decker and Sargent. Line Decker focused on shape. Kind of more kind of structure, planning, analyzation. And then、um, for Sargent, we focus more on kind of、uh, expression, brush strokes, edges.、Mm -hmm. And so I hope you guys enjoyed that class. I had a whole lot of fun. I learned so much, actually. Hope you guys learned a lot from watching me. And we'll check back in soon with your homework. See ya. See ya. Hey guys, welcome back. That was so much fun. I learned so much.、Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I was a little scared, you know, trying to dive into Lion Decker and Sargent. They are, you know, two masters that people have trouble replicating.、Mm -hmm. um, but every time I step away from a master study,、uh, classical master study, a modern master study, I learned so much and I kind of、uh, introduced some of the concepts I learned into my own work. Yeah, you did well. Good job. Oh, thank you, Sella. Yeah. <laughs> so, on to your assignments. Study two classical masters. They can be different, they can be the same. Yeah, feel free to either do the entirety of a piece or do what Ross did with the Lion Decker piece where you kind of just crop in on a part of it and really focus on that area.、Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it'd be cool to try two different artists, maybe、Ooh. two different styles. Alphonse Mucha,、Ooh. Zorn, Sargent, there's a whole bunch. I mean, Da Vinci, right?、Mm -hmm. you, if you want to do the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Focus on accuracy. Again, either the 5% to 10% flair if you want to try something, but the main intention is to try and learn from the masters. Yeah, yeah. when you post your finished assignments, make sure you just put on there whoever、um, piece you use. Just credit the original artist as well. Yeah. And、uh, next month, month five, we are diving into Foundations Elevation.、Mm. Yes, this is the first time I'll introduce landscapes and environments.、Mm -hmm. So I am so excited for that. We've been studying a lot of kind of from reference, a lot of anatomy, you know, math studies, but I will teach you the basics of environmental design and then we'll jump into painting heads. Nice. But yeah, that's something to look forward to heads and landscapes. So we'll see you guys next time on Digital Art Bootcamp. Bye. Bye.